I'm going to take you through a few details regarding what I could call sums of random variables. This is an important probability uh, calculus technique to be able to. Basically, the generic challenge is, what if you know the distribution of in some uh, variables, and then you add them together? What is the distribution of the sum of variables? This becomes an important thing to be able to handle when we are going to, if we are going to show, which I will in the later uh, additional math videos for you, to show how the sampling distribution of the variance and also how the t distribution actually appears. That is, why the t is actually a t. To be able to prove this, we need basically to be able to handle sums of random variables. Uh, so basically, you could say, if we take a simple start on that, we should see if we could find the density function for the sum of two random variables. Generally speaking, most often, x and y, the, the variables that we deal with, will be assumed independent. Independent. That will reappear a number of times, such, a, such an assumption. The basic way to express the density function of a sum of two would be to sort of integrate out the joint density, if we knew that one, of the two, of x, z minus x. That is the very generic. Actually, this one is very general. It doesn't, it doesn't assume the independence, actually. That's the very general way of expressing it. Now, the independence comes actually here, in uh, where I show you what is known as the classical convolution formula for sums of random variables. The classical convolution formula that is known for independent variables. We can express this joint density as the, um, as the product of the x density evaluated in x and the y density evaluated in z minus minus x. I'm sorry, z minus x, it should be up here. This is then the classical convolution formula for how to find the density of a sum of two random variables as a function of if you have each individual density, you can find, if you manage to s solve this integral, you could find the sum of two of uh, independent random variables. So that is just uh, sort of step one, which we're actually not going to use. I just wanted to show you this. So this is very basic probability calculus. There is a way to find the sum of two, the distribution. That is, we find the density. And if we know the density, we know the distribution. Now. The general tool that we are going to use when we are going to look at sums of many independent random variables is actually going to be another one. And this another tool is what is known as moment generating functions. This is actually an alternative. You could say we have two types of functions that describe the distribution. We have the density function. That's one function that describes the distribution. We have the distribution function. That's another function that describes a distribution. Then there are actually other options, but these two, and here is the third one coming up, namely what is known as the moment generating function. And the definition of the moment generating function is that we take the expected value of the exponential. So the moment generating function of the random variable x is the expected value of the exponential, so a nonlinear function, exponential of tx, that is the moment generating function evaluated at t. Now, I'm gonna, not going to dig into why it's called the moment generating function. It's related to the moments, because that's not uh, the details I will uh, spend time on here. Rather, I want to tell you that we can use this to prove things about random variables. And we can do this because we have a core result regarding moment generating functions. So you should think of it like this. If you know the moment generating function of a distribution, you know the distribution. 
So you can go from the moment generating to the distribution. You can go from the distribution to the moment generating. It's an alternative to the uh, two other functions. The core result, which is important for us, for the purpose that we are going to uh, use here, is that if we have independent random variables, as I said, this is the recurrent uh, assumption here, independent, then, then the moment generating function of the sum of such random variables is the product of the individual moment generating functions. This is going to be important to us, that this is actually, I mean, you can prove this, and I'm not going to prove this for you. Uh, this we're going to take as a fact here. Knowing this, we can actually use this, because now we could begin, for instance, with the normal distribution. I'll show you how we can use it. The normal distribution, we could start out to say, what if we have an x that is normally distributed like this, with a mu, mean mu, and a variance sigma squared. Then we could actually find the moment generating function for this one. How should we find this? Well, um, we should find then the integral, that is the definition of the expected value of a function of x, it's a nonlinear function, we should remember. So we should take the, this one, and then we should take the normal density, e to minus 2 sigma squared, x minus mu squared dx. This would be the integral we should solve. And in fact, and this is where I'm going to jump details, I'm not going to take you through all details here. We did something similar when in the videos where I found the mean and variance for the normal distribution. We, those, that would be similar types of arguments that we would use to go here dot, 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 and we would be able to find that the moment generating function for the normal looks like this, an exponential to t squared sigma squared. So this is how a normal moment gen generating function looks. We can use this now, together with the product result I just have here on the top of this page. Since, what if we have x1 up to xn independent normal distributed random variables with each their individual mu i and their individual variance like this, and still I may write it, I may skip it sometimes, still independent. Independent. How should we prove the following result? Because here's the result, actually. This is the main result for the normal, main result. Something that we might already have used, actually, in the course without thinking too much about it. The main result is that if we take the sum of n normal random variables, they are again normally distributed with mean, some of the means, and variance, some of the variance. Actually, the mean and variance thing we have touched on in the course previously. However, I did not prove or even mention earlier on that summing up normals actually, again, gives something which is a normal distribution. I mean, it's not enough to know means and variances to, to make that statement. You should also know that it's a normal. And this is, in fact, so for the normal. How can it be proved? Well, it can be proved by means of the moment generating function. Because let's try to find the moment generating function of the sum of these independent random variables. I use the product rule for moment generating functions to express, I use this product sign here, 
that this is the same as the moment generating functions of the individual ones. This is the product rule for moment generating function I use. Then I plug in the moment generating function for the normal, which I wrote up here. This was the one from here. I plug that in. I think I can have both of them there, like this. That would then be e t mu i plus one half t squared sigma i squared. And now I use the classical rule for when I multiply exponentials, I do that by adding the exp exponents of the exponential. So that's classical rule for, for, um, for the exponential. So this is the same as the exponential evaluated on t times the sum of mu i plus half t squared sum of sigma i squared. And here is the argument then. Then you say, aha, you say, I can recognize this function. This is the moment generating function that corresponds to a normal with the mean of the sum of mu and the sum of variances. And since the moment generating function uniquely defines the distribution, I have now proved that this sum is a normal distribution. So that's the way the argument goes here. So now I have proved this result for sums of random normals. I'm going to take one more distribution here that we actually need to use in our course for the things that comes. I want to take the chi-square distribution. This is also important to us in our course. First of all, what is the moment generating function of the chi-square? Now here I'm going to jump even more details. I'm not even going to write out the integral I'm going to solve. Actually, I am looking at a chi-square distribution with new degrees of freedom, which for probability knowers is the same as a gamma new half two. We don't use the gamma thing in this course, but for other people that might be interesting to, to recap here. The moment generating function for the chi-square distribution with new degrees of freedom is 1 minus 2t. I give you that without proof, like this. Now, what if I now have um, x random variables, x1 up to xn, which are all of them chi-square distributed with each their individual degrees of freedom? Then, and I emphasize again, independent such variables. Then the result for the chi-square distribution comes here. The result is that the sum of such chi-square distributed random variables becomes actually a chi-square distribution with the sum of the degrees of freedom as the new degrees of freedom. And the way to prove it is exactly like before, and I'm going to do it very brief, that would just be to go for the moment generating function for the sum. That would be the product of the individual ones, and I plug them in directly here as I have written it up here. 1 minus 2t minus nu i half, and then I use the exponent rule again, and it becomes the 1 minus 2t minus 1 half the sum of nu i. And that is, again, we recognize this as the moment generating function for the chi-square with the sum of nu i as degrees of freedom, and we have proven the result. So I have now given to you the formal proofs of sums of independent normal variables also becoming normal. The sums of chi-square random variables, independent still, becomes a chi-square. And I have shown you the way to prove it is by means of this moment generating function tools. And in the beginning, I told you this a very basic thing that you could go directly on the definitions of densities to look for, and that, that could be a solution in certain specific cases. However, generally for these sums things, we use the moment generating function approach. Thank you. <laughs>